What's going on guys? One, love out to everybody. We got UFC 300, Pereira versus Hill. Predictions breakdown here guys. Before we get started, hit the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to this channel. Also check out my Patreon account for all of my predictions, face off predictions and prop plays. And you can also donate to my PayPal account or the link will be down below. UFC 300, pay-per-view card here. Made it to 300. <laughs> um, pretty good card, man. Every fight on this card is, is pretty awesome, man. And um, we're going to break this down the best way we can and give my predictions. And who I feel, you know, will win, all right? Like we usually do. Um, all right, let's jump into this real quick. First fight here, guys. We got uh, Devison Figueroa versus Cody Garbrath. Um, Figueroa here. Coming up from... Um, 125 he's at 135 now um powerful hitter man very athletic guy good takedown good ground game physically strong you know so this guy here will you know throws everything with pretty much 100 percent power can gas out but um even when he's gassing out he still will try to push the pace he's gonna have a three inch of reacher um their, their ability um He's, he's pretty durable, durable guy. Can can get hurt in the fight, but he holds his own, right? Um, Cody here, Cody Galbraith. Um, quick hands, um, quick movement. His footwork in and out, lateral movement. But he's not durable though. That's what I wanted about Cody. Um, let me see here. Um, what happened? Uh, can get hurt on the foot. Can get knocked out. Um, he will also fail under pressure so meaning that once you start to pressure him and you know the guy is a good fighter or has the skills like Figueroa you know once Figueroa start to pressure him pressure him then he won't do so good because he knows if he get touch he get he can get knocked out right so um I'm liking Figueroa here guys does Cody have a chance here yeah, I guess if he implements his footwork movement you know but still man this is one of those fights where the biggest problem is Cody man is it's just not durable. Slight touch, he can go out. It's difficult picking in this fight against a guy like Figueroa, who is pack power man, he's a heavy hitter, and Figueroa is very athletic and quick. It's a, it's a, I feel it's a tough matchup for Cody because of his durability. You know, if he was durable, then you know, and you know, could take a little shot here and there, which he faces not meant to get hit. <laughs> you know, but some guys can get hit more than others without going out. Like uh, Max Holloway, you know, you know, you can eat shots and keep coming. If it could just be a glancing off the head, you know, Cody could get knocked out. You know, it, it is what it is. That's the game. You know, that's the <laughs> that's just the sport, man. You know, um, been knocked out four times, man. And also in his amateur, he's been knocked out too. A lot, a lot of people don't know about that. You know, our, some guys just touch them and they go out. I'm going with Figueroa here. I'm gonna say Figueroa by KOTQ in the second round. I'm gonna say Figueroa 60% and Cody 40. Next fight we got Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Um, Green here more the shell defense, feel the shell style up there, kind of roll with punches them. Um, but he's getting hitable though, you know, and been getting knocked out. Um, but his movement is not bad, but even though he's moving, he's still getting a hit. Um, I feel like he doesn't have the best fight IQ. But, um, you know, he will bring the fight, though. Um, and he's going to have the speed advantage here. He's going to be the way quicker guy here. But again, you know, he's fighting a guy like Jim Miller. You know, both guys are veterans, which J Jim Miller is, is a pretty smart fighter. Pretty smart fight IQ fighter, man. Like, this guy is a pretty good fighter and um, he he will utilize everything that he has you know not just stand up and strike him go for takedowns go for submissions i mean bobby green will do that too you know bobby green also wrestles too but i just feel like miller has a better fight iq here and i just feel like miller just just his overall wins you know is just more consistent you know and i feel miller is more durable um let me see here uh, yeah so that's about it i'm liking miller i must say um Miller by decision, but it could be a close fight. 
So it's a 50-50 form for me because, you know, you know, a guy like Bobby Green, you know, he's a quick guy, you know, and if he's able to keep the jab on you and move around without getting hit and without getting taken down, then, which Bobby Green is pretty hard to take down, but Miller, is, like I said, is a veteran, man. This guy is a very good fighter, man, and smart fighter. You know, when it comes to smarts and kind of analyzing the fight, it's, you know, open is not just you know going wild and just doing whatever you know you kind of pinpoint things out and analyze it and break it down makes a big difference so i'm gonna go miller here miller by decision guys all right next fight we got jessica android versus marina rodriguez jessica here is well-rounded um strong very strong at 115 which is at 115 now pack power will take you down look to ground and pound will pick you up and slam you at 115 she is she's tough because she carries a lot of power at 115 right and against these girls at 115 that have a hard time you know matching her a girl at marino she's well-rounded um more more tie knees elbows nasty in the clinch but i feel like they're gonna be a physically strong like a strength advantage with jessica and um she got the three inch of reach but uh, if you look at rodriguez she's not really a finisher she's not a woman that goes in there and, and finishes fights um strong in the clinch like i said and possibly could clinch up you know with jessica and throw knees in the pocket and elbows but you know like um like i mentioned there you know she's not I think I could be wrong she got no whoops take that back she got seven by knockout um um i think i saw something here oh, okay I take that back here guys I made a mistake okay she she's she can finish you but she only has one finish in the UFC and let me just rephrase that she has one finish in the UFC out of the UFC is where she has the majority of her knockouts see um, she has a contender knockout win there um, Let me see here. Um, in the UFC, she has by Amanda Rebus is the only knockout that she have. So she has seven by knockout, guys, but or I should say two by knockout in the UFC. Her last one was against Michelle Watson, but her, her her rest of her knockout. So she really has only two in the UFC, and the rest of it is like in the different organizations. So, so Marina Rodriguez is, in my opinion, is gonna need a finish. So she let this fight prolong. Um, may not be as good for her, you know. So can she finish Jessica? It's a possibility, even though she only have two finishes. But Jessica also is like, you know, been finished like five times by KO, TQ, and four by submission. It's gonna be more likely that Rodriguez probably knock out Jessica. You know, that gonna be the, um, you know, her path to finish if there's any finish from her. But man. I just see Jessica can take this fight anywhere if she wants. She can take it to the ground. She's heavy with the strikes. At 115, she's strong at 115 and very, very experienced. Um, I'm going to go with Jessica here, guys. I'm going to say Jessica by... Um, uh, I'm going to say Jessica by, by decision, and I'm not confident. Like I always say about a woman fights, even guy fights. So, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, Rodriguez could come in here you know and finish Jessica it's a possibility but I'm going with Jessica by decision next fighter we got John Turner versus Renato Marciano good good fight here every single fight in this card is pretty good man it's all good matchups um Jalen Turner here pretty well rounded due to but have a three inch reach pinpoint accurate striker very technical guy he can gas out in the fight when you start to like you know push a high striking pace on him um, <clears throat> and uh, he can get taken down too but from what I've seen from his fight here against um, Gamrot which he won that fight in my opinion and Dan Hooker kind of edged that fight out a little, a little bit you know because of the third around there but I felt he beat Gamrat in that fight. Um, he showed good take on defense in that fight. You know, his opponent Renat, Renato is known for more Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You know, more 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 the submissions, right? Usually, if he gets to the ground, especially with the rear naked, you know, he he can choke you out, right? So um, he's he's more known for that. But um, 
His striking is uh, his striking is okay. You see, he doesn't have any by knockout, right? Just ten by submissions, been knocked a couple of times. This is also a guy that doesn't handle a shot too well. You know, you hit him or touch him, he gets wobbled, gets dazed, right? Um, let me see what he would definitely look for: take on double single legs and go for the submission. But zero knockouts though, and he's not as he's not as bad as um Cody, but he's kind of there too. Um, it's a tough one here, guys, because Turner he can slow down in this fight, you know, he can slow down, and Renato can make this a grindy, grindy fight where he's just pushing for takedown, pushing for takedown, pushing for takedown, pushing for takedown, you know, and just kind of wear out Turner, you know, by just in the clinch. But Jalen Turner is good at exiting off the cage and sidestepping and countering. And um, Jalen Turner striking, man, is freaking accurate, you know, pinpoint accurate, man. Um, and cage is going to be bigger. It's going to be a bigger cage too, so there's more room to move around. I'm liking Turner here, guys. Um, but I could see a victory for, for Ronaldo, definitely, you know, he get this fight to the ground. I don't think he will submit Turner, because Turner is pretty well rounded dude, you know. The, um, he's, 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 he's a pretty, um, you know, well-rounded fighter also, with has submissions also, you know. He could get you from off his back, get your neck too, you know. But Renato on the ground, in my opinion, is a better BJJ practitioner, right? But, um... I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Turner here, guys. I'm gonna say Turner, but if this fight get out the first, Turner is still good. You know, I think the guy that's less durable here is Renato. Yeah, he's not as durable, man. And if Turner connect, you could see him going out. But I'm gonna go Turner by KOTK first round, 50-50. Not confident. Like I said, Renato has a chance. Believe me. So even fight. Next fighter, guys. We got Sodig Yusuf versus Diego Lopez. Um, Yusuf, you're a um, very heavy-handed guy, man. Um, well, I want to say he's very, very heavy-handed. <laughs> but he's, he, he, if he connects, he can hurt you. But it's not very, very, very. But he packs power. Um, he usually fades after first round, man. And that power that he has, you know, is just not there anymore. Um, he would also look for the takedowns, man. But a guy like Lopez, man. Lopez is... This guy is a... This guy is a freaking... is a good fighter, man. I mean... Never really, you know, thought thought how good he was, you know, or, you know, um, I guess I say, I would say, um, and how technical he is, I would say, you know, I never really noticed that, you know, until I started watching all his, watching his fights, you know, and even some fights, even against um, Evolov, that was a short notice for him, and he had Evolov in all type of problems, man, he could have won that fight, he had probably had Evolov in maybe like three or four submissions, even caught him with a punch, even with standing up. So this guy is very, very well-rounded, dude. This guy is skill. Like, anywhere he can win. You know, you, you get him on the ground, he, he would definitely so much. His, his ground game is pretty high level. I would say in UFC right now, as far as submissions, and you know, on the ground, other than, um... Not Max Oliveira, other than um friggin' Alex Oliveira. I say Lopez is up there on submissions, man. He's just skill, very skilled with the submissions, very technical. Um and his striking is not bad either. You know, and like I said, I didn't realize how good he was. And you know, against Gavin Tucker I had Gavin Tucker winning, you know, it's like oh man. <laughs> you know, but Lopez is a good, good, good friggin' fighter, man. Um let me see here. Uh yeah, um, I'm, I'm liking Lopez. And um, the reason why I say that because, you know, stand-up-wise, you know, Yusuf is going to have to knock him out in the first round, which Yusuf could do that. But um, he could do it, but probably unlikely, you know. Um, his last knockout was in 219 against Gabriel Benitez um, and this is matchups Suman Makaterian I mean no offense no no disrespecting any guys or anything and all of it in the day but Suman is not really a, you know he's not really a, a top fighter you know so <laughs> you know um, his Mike Davis fight 
which he won that it was pretty good fight for him and Mike Davis is on a good roll right now and looking very good but Mike Davis from the contender series Mike Davis is two different Mike Davis now if Mike Davis fought Yusuf now he would he would beat Yusuf yeah probably finish Yusuf in my opinion um, yeah I'm liking Lopez I'm gonna say Lopez by um, I'm gonna say Lopez by submission man submission in the first round if, if Lopez get a hold of him anywhere legs neck you know even striking in my opinion but like I said Yusuf does pack power but Lopez pack power too <laughs> you know what I mean and and his ground game is just very technical very very technical ground game man so Lopez by submission first round guys uh, next fight here guys we have uh, uh, come on we have um, Holly Holm versus Kyla Harrison so Kyla Harrison coming from PFL if you guys don't know who Kyla Harrison is was champion over there I believe two times um, usually fights at 155 though so she's gonna go down to 135 for this fight um, uh, Holly Holm here Holly Holm is well rounded you know she's a veteran you know we all know from Ronda Rosie and you know she fought nearly every single woman in the sports Chris Aborg, German Academy, and Valentina Chichenko, Misha Tate um, her last her last knockout finish was in 217 um, against uh, Betch Carrera and before that it was Ronda Rose with a head kick so she's not really a finisher um, she implements a lot of clinching now in her fights where she likes to tie up a lot now and put you into cage and pepper you and go for takedowns in this fight against Kyla Harrison I don't think that should be her game plan and I don't believe it's going to be a game plan her game plan is going to be kind of like how she fought Ronda Rousey so this is kind of like a <laughs> a throwback to the to to Ronda Rousey right because this girl is a judo practitioner you know can she pull this fight off you know a girl like Kyla Harris you know or such a woman you know um from what I see you know from watching her for a couple of times here on PF, PFL you know she I mean she is good she's very dominant you know um when she get the double legs and the takedowns and she clinch she can get you down and she can look for submissions the submissions is more her thing you know and her ground and pounds are pretty heavy the only one thing about this fight though is um man can Holly Holm stop the takedowns that's the thing you know six by KO TKO six by submission can Holly Holm stop the takedowns you know what I'm saying and what game plan is she gonna do is she gonna be backpedaling and just touching 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 yeah she could do that you know and but can she land a head kick on Kylo and knock her out it's possible you know she could probably finish Kylo it's, it's very possible she, she, she definitely could win this fight I'm not counting Holly Holm out but the thing about this fight is just I'm looking at more of the durability I'm looking at more at speed um, the you know just the closing the distance from Carlo you know um, the double legs the takedowns the the power you know and I say the Holly Holm doesn't possess that but I mean I mean is I mean is Holly Holm wash washed up is she not good fighter anymore I mean yeah she's still she's still good she's still skilled but man she got to be able to can stop the takedowns though that's that that is the whole thing is she able to do that you know, if she can't stop the takedowns, man, this is going to be one of those fights where she either could get submitted or most likely just go to a decision. You know what I'm saying? And she's going to have to be able to can possibly land those strikes. Because sometimes with those strikes now, they just pepper and pepper and there's no power behind it. You know, she's going to need something that kind of, you know, can hurt Kyla Harrison and put, and put, and put her out, to like knock, knock her out or something like that. She's gonna need to do something like that. I, I don't know if she if she able to do that, you know, against um Buna Silva, she got guillotine choke, even though Buna Silva was you know was busted, I guess, for drugs or something at like that time. <laughs> drugs. 
you know, she was on some kind of sub supplement or something, I don't know. But, you know, her fights are just very close split decisions and some fights seem like kind of rob robbers at time. You know, Kyla Harrison is just her 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 strength advantage, her pressure, her takedowns, her power, close the distance quick. Uh, her, uh, her explosiveness, her athleticism could just make her win this fight over home. Because home gonna have to connect. I don't know if she can do that. So I'm gonna go with Harrison here, Kyla Harrison. I'm gonna say Kyla Harrison by decision. But it's a close fight with a 50-50. I mean, Holly Holm could be moving around for all three rounds. There's a bigger cage and just touch, 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 touch. But I believe that Kyla Harrison will get the takedown, man. I mean, she will close the distance, man. Judo, she has a good double leg, single leg takedown. She has an explosive double single leg takedown. She doesn't need to capitalize on that all three rounds. And Holly Holm is not, not like uh, Amanda Nunes. If it's Amanda Nunes, it'd be different. You know, it's just that Amanda Nunes punches and lands, it's precise. Holly Holm had that or has that, but it's not the same anymore. It doesn't really stick. And when she lands it, she kind of, you know, it's like kind of like she'll be backpedaling after she lands it and like it's just not, um, it's just, it's just not tight. So I'm going to go with Kyle Harrison. I say Kyle Harrison by decision 50 50. But like I said, a home could win though. So I'm not, I'm not calling her out. So be careful with this fight. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, next fight here, guys. We have. We have. Calvin Cutter versus Adjamin Sterling. Um, Calvin Cutter, her well-rounded skill guy, boxing base on him. Um, good takedowns, good grappling. But it's been off for two years from knee injury. I believe he, believe he blowed his knee. I mean, that's what it looks like um, after the On and Allen fight. So as in fought since 2022. Um, Sterling here. Um, I mean, we all know, you know, he's, he's a very well-rounded guy. Wrestler was a champion, lost to Amali. Um, striking is kind of up and down. Sometimes the striking look better than sometimes. It just, <laughs> just depends, you know. Yeah, sometimes it looks way better, and sometimes it just doesn't look as good. And like like what he did with Amali, kind of round in, leave his chin there to get hit, you know, to get countered. But after that fight, though, he's just been grappling a lot. So he has three grappling matches, which is excellent, because he could work that against Kevin Cato in, in this fight. You know, to avoid to avoid the strikes from Cater. You know, he could probably slow down Cater and take him down. He's gonna have to slow down Cater. You can't have Cater get in the roll and just start landing the punches, especially the boxing. But I'm gonna go with Sterling here. I must I must say Sterling by decision, but it's a 50-50 guys. I'm not confident. Next fight here, guys, we have um Yuri Pro Hachka versus Alexander Relic. Um Yuri here, um Next well-rounded guy here, skill guy, um, striking is very impressive. Switches stance, have a combination of a samurai kind of a karate kind of kung fu. He mixes it up though. He's just all over the place, but it's it's very effective. Um, pack power. Uh, we we'll go for takedown. We we'll look for submissions. Apply a mad amount of pressure on you coming forward, man. Relic here. We have our next card here where both guys back to back blew out their knees. So Relic also blew out his knee in 2022 also, you know, by Juan Valkovic when he fought him. Remember that last card back there when, um, oh, I can't remember right now, guys. That card way back with um, uh, both guys blew their shoulders out and both had back-to-back -back fights. It was Morono. And it was Ortega and... Um, Ortega and Ro Ortega, Ar Ortega and Roval. Both Ortega and Roval blew out their shoulders. And I remember I said in the video, oh man, both of these guys blew their shoulder. They're probably going to lose. <laughs> well, I had Ortega winning and then I had Marona winning. But both guys with blow out shoulders weren't back to back. So keep that in mind, man. <laughs> so, um, you know, the last fight here, I went for... Um, I went for Adjiman Sterling, so be careful because Kevin Cutter could win after blowing out his knee. And Prohachka here and Relic. You know, Relic is a good fighter, but I feel the pressure from um, from Yuri will give Relic problem here. Um, you know, Relic is, you know, he's well-rounded. We look for takedowns. We definitely look for takedowns. He will strike with you for a little bit in the first round and second round. He will go for takedowns. But like I said, he messed blow, he blew out his knee. Not as active. Um, not as not, not, not as active in, in 2022. 23 wasn't there until now. 
So he fought one time in 2021 and one time in 2020. So this guy's not active at all, man. He throws heavy leg kicks too. But I'm liking um, Yuri for this fight. Yuri Prohachka for this fight. And um, I'm going to say Prohachka by knockout in KOTQ in the first round, guys. But it's 50-50. And like I told you, you know, like the last card there, a couple cards back with Morona and Roval. Not, not Morona, but Ortega and Roval both blew out their shoulders. You know, and these back-to-back -back fights here, and I'm going for the opposite guys that blew the knees out. So keep <laughs> keep that in mind, man. So Kevin Cutter and Relic could win the fight. But I'm liking um, Prohachka for that fight, guys. All right? By KOTQ first round, not confident. 50-50. Next fight here, guys. We've got Bo Nickel versus Cody Brandage. Um, what I see from Nickel, Nickel looks like a pretty good prospect, man. Um, he... He has a very strong wrestling base, and he also has boxing. His hands doesn't look bad, and his, and his defense and his durability looks very good. Um, Cody, on the hand, you know, Cody's a fighter, man. Um, he's going to be, you know, in my opinion, he's a more experienced guy, you know, even by the record. And um, he's well-rounded, but he will drop the ball, though. He will drop the ball. You know, can Bo Nickel, or should I say, can Cody beat Bo Nickel? Yeah, he can. This is a fight where I'd be careful with it. Um, but the thing about um, Cody is that same kind of thing, you know, he doesn't handle a shot too well. But he's a fighter and a dog, though, and you know, but he doesn't handle a shot too well and he can get submitted put in bad situations, right? Um, this is a fight where I'd be careful with it. And I know the odds on Bonico are going to be high. So I'd be careful with it. Um, I wouldn't sleep on Cody. Um, but I'm going to go with Bo Nicolo just, you know, I just feel Bo, Bo, Bo Nicolo, you know from my homework and research, he's a good prospect, you know, and what I see from Cody, Cody will will drop the ball man, you know what I'm saying, so um, I'll go Bo Nicolo by KOTKO, it could be grown and pound guys in the first round, I give Bo Nicolo 60%, and I give Cody 40 but like I said, Depend, depending on the odds in this fight, which we're going to check that out in a little bit. I know I can check it out on here too in the topology, but I'd like to save that for the last, you know. But like I said, just be careful with this one. I wouldn't go so high in Bonico because Cody could surprise you. It always happens, man, especially on pay-per-view cards. You know, these cards are always... Just never know, man. Anything can happen. Holly Holm wins, Kevin Cotto wins, Relic wins. Just, you know, Yusuf gets knocked out, knock, knocks out Lopez in the first round. <laughs> he just, he just one of those things, man. You know? So, it's, 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 um, what, what, what do I always say? You know, um, nothing guaranteed. You know what I'm saying? Anything can happen, man. Nothing guaranteed, guys. You understand? So, it could all be the opposite way. All right, so Bo Nickel, KOTKO, first round. Next fighter, guys, we got Charles Oliver versus Armin Tasharukin. Oliver here, we all, we all know most, the most finishes, the by submissions, very, very rounded guy, very on skill striker, you know, had a little ups and downs early in his fights here, you know, but he psh, been in a long fight, winning streak, man, only lost to Islam Makachev. Um, yeah, can Armin beat him? I think so. Armin has the wrestling to neutralize Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you notice, when it comes to you know the MMA or any kind of fighting, when you have the wrestler them who knows the submission games, kind of like a Makachev, you know they know the you know they know the the, the the move, they know the submissions, then they can defend against it. You know these guys take it on Grand Young, man, and that's it. I feel Armin can do that. Standing with Oliveira, mm, I I wouldn't advise that. But again, a guy like Oliveira. Um, when it comes to striking, he can get hurt, he can get finished. You know, we see that a couple of times already. He can get finished, man. Um, he get days in the foot, but he recover. You know, four by knockout, four by KO losses, but he recover. Twenty one by submission, ten by KO TKO, man. He, but he can recover though. You know, I mean, and then he comes back and and then finish it. But I just feel Armin can neutralize that, and then and avoid the submissions and even avoid getting knocked out. Um, yeah, I'm going for Armin here. I must say Armin by decision, but it's a 50-50, man, because Charles Alvaro is, is a tough dude, man. He's a very good fighter. You can tell by the record, man. This guy was just, just straight undefeated. I mean, undefeated, but a, a, a long winning streak, you know, until Islam. 
next fighter guys for the BMF belt <laughs> BMF belt man who's gonna get that BMF belt <laughs> let's see man um, we got um, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway um, Justin Gaethje man um, pretty well rounded guy too strong wrestling base heavy leg kicks heavy handed um, will push a heavy pace on you especially with the boxing um, can get kind of flat for the dimensions um, but Max got I feel Max got more the dog in him though and the, the, you know the guy that's not going to give up or quit um, I'm not saying that Gechi will quit but there are situations and some fights where you know it just doesn't go his way and then you see him just you know he just gets submitted and I know I, and I know he's fighting tougher competition you know you can't take that away from him fighting tougher competition is not an easy sport to come into and fight so that's understandable but um you know I just feel Max all the way here is just the movement you know the uh, I feel Max mixed up a little more and um like I said the dog with durability I'm, I'm gonna go with Max all the way here I'm gonna say Max all the way by a decision I'm gonna give Max 60 percent and I'm gonna give um just Dustin 40 all right it's a five round fight too guys next fighter we got China versus China man that's pretty quicker okay um, is the coming event this is also for 115 for the belts I believe Willie Zhang is a champion here um, Willie Zhang versus, versus um, Exan Yan I know I pronounced that wrong Shanan Yan I think or something like that <laughs> um, Zhang here is pretty well rounded too. A lot of these fighters, a lot of these people on the card here are, are top fighters, man. So the most of them are going to be well rounded. Um, um, more the heavier hitter here. Like uh, she sits down more in her punches. And I feel she's a little more well rounded with the submissions. So she can get the takedowns, which she's pretty good at. I believe what uh, I think she was at Team Alpha Male, wasn't she? Or was that Yan? No one of these ladies was at Team Alpha Male. I think, I think it was Yan could be wrong yeah Yan is at team alpha male so Yan's been working a lot more on our submissions because she has been getting submitted on her ground game she got submitted by Carl X Um but also when she fought um, Mackenzie Dern you know um, she's having a hard time with the takedowns stopping the takedowns too uh, which that fight was pretty close could have went to Dern um, she's not as well rounded as Zhang though and doesn't really pack the power like what Zhang has but she does have power and her, she moves around a little, probably a little more better than Zhang does. A lot more, you know, she had a lot more, she has more of a, more of a, which it says here, she has a sander background. Um, her movement is a little bit more um, elusive. Um, a lot more, like, um, cutting corners and lateral movements, more in and out. A lot more blitzing and jumping back out. Zhang has a similar thing too. But I feel that Yan does it a little bit more in the movement here. Um, yeah, but I'm liking um, I'm liking Willie Zhang here. I'm gonna say Willie Zhang by um, I'm gonna say by submission in the second round, and I'm gonna give Zhang sixty, and I'm gonna give Yan forty. All right. I feel Zhang is also more physically stronger too, in my opinion. And takedowns in this fight will make a difference. Zhang is going to utilize a lot more takedowns. She's not going to want to strike with Yan too much. Because like I said, Yan is more elusive on in and out, blitzing in and out, and, and kind of like avoiding the strikes, you know, that kind of like that um, point fighting kind of vibe, you know, touch and go, right? So, but I like Zhang by submission second round. Um, main event, guys, Alex Perra versus Jamal Hill. Um, Alex Pereira here, striking base, um, ground game has gotten a little better, but you can still take him down though, man. You can still get a double leg and single leg on him. Heavy leg kicks, um, heavy punches, and can get knocked out. This is this is the next guy here who he doesn't handle a, a, a punch too well. So there's a couple guys on here that doesn't handle a punch too well. Barrow doesn't handle a hit too well. Cody Brandit doesn't really handle a hit too well, but not so bad. Actually, Prohaska can get hurt too on the foot too, man. Alexander Relic too can get hurt. Adjaman Sterling doesn't handle hit too well also. Um, Diego Lopez is pretty durable. Jalen Turner can get hurt, but you know he can still handle a little bit. But but, but a guy Renato doesn't handle it too well, man. He get days all over the place. 
Bobby Green is becoming slightly like that too, and definitely Cody Garbrandt. I would say Cody Garbrandt is number one guy in here that is just doesn't handle a shot, doesn't even have to be flush. So um, this fight here, man, um, Alex is a dangerous fighter, um, but Hill here, man, you know, Hill was a champion, but he, I believe he hurt his Achilles, I don't know if he tore it, Achilles tendon. Um, Heavy striker, I mean, um, Hill, um, very, actually very technical guy, you know, by, I guess by the looks of him, he just probably, oh, he doesn't really look like it, but this guy's a very good fighter, man, his, his striking, his grown game, just his tenacity, his heart, dog in him, you know, he, like, he's not going to give up, you know, um, yeah, this guy's, this guy's a pretty skilled fighter, um, sweet dreams, man, yeah, um, this is gonna be kind of like a revenge for Alex because he'll beat Glover Teixeira in the last fight there. And this is like Glover Teixeira trains with, um, he trains with Alex Pereira. You know, they work techniques. Alex, you know, shows him striking and he, in return he shows um, Alex Pereira on the ground game, right? Um, it's just sort of train together. Um, ah, man, this is a tough one here, guys. But, you know, man, fight like this, man, durability for Hill. Hill is 100% durable. This guy is durable and he gets the job done. Alex can get hurt in his fight, man. Even when he fought, um, when Alex fought, um, which that fight, I felt he lost that fight. When he fought John Valkovic, he went to a split, and I felt he lost that fight. Valkovic was taking him down. In the first round, Valkovic hit him a couple good shots, kind of hurt him. You know, I just feel Hill is going gonna, is gonna to kill TQ um, Alex second round so i'm going with arm um, hill kotq in the second round guys 50 50 fight but i'm liking hill kotq second round um quick look at the odds here crazy odds that's what these odds are gonna look like man oh man let's check these odds out these crazy banana odds <laughs> these crazy odds man let's see these crazy numbers and these things let's see what they got here it's all over the place already. Okay, Lopez and what's up with this? It's all over the place. Okay, cool. and let's start with the whatever. They go, I don't even know what first fight. They, they, they could switch it up. Cody Garbrandt, uh, Figueroa is at three ten. I mean, it's a lot of odds for Figueroa there, you know. But man, this Cody is just dude. He's just not durable, man. If Cody is unable to stop Figueroa by, with a punch first round or so, or take him down or something to neutralize the power from Figueroa, he doesn't have to neutralize that, kind of take that, the power off. If he's unable to do that, he could see him going out, man. It doesn't take much. And Figueroa got that power. This, this is a matchup where Figueroa is a bad matchup for Cody because Figueroa got that power, man. It's not like he's, he's a guy that is just going to grapple. He's going to freaking swing at your head. You're going to try to take your head off. So a three ten, I can't complain with that man. It's you know it's not crazy odds on that one. Bobby Green and Jim Miller, wow, they're high on Bobby Green on this one. Bobby Green is, I mean, Bobby Green is a favorite. I mean, I can see why, but uh, this fight for me is an even man, and I, I, I personally like Miller, and but it's an even fight because Green is a good fighter too, but I like Miller, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't have Green at 180. He's, he's sleeping on Miller. Miller is a good fighter. Miller consistency shows all the time. Green is not that consistent, man. And Miller is more durable, in my opinion. He's way more durable fighter and better fight IQ, in my opinion. So he shouldn't be no underdog. That's, that's, that's crazy. This is crazy odds. It should be even. Be careful. Jessica Android and Marino. They got Android 130, 141. This is even, guys. Because I can see a, a win for Marino here is possible. But strength advantage is just the fact that Mar Mar that 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 Marina is going to need a finish, and she's not really a finisher. It's just it's kind of rough. It's, it's, uh, like like I said, it's just even and it's close. It's close to even. Jalen Turner or not? Wow, they got Jalen Turner at two twenty five. Oh wow, wow. So they're high on Jalen Turner here, huh? I wouldn't be so high on Jalen Turner though. Like I told you, this one is a this this odds here. This one is crazy. Um, and my break on here, I have a 50-50, so it should be even. And the reasons for that because Renato can get the takedowns. 
he can at least get one or two takedowns and that's probably all he needs if he can look for submissions so I wouldn't be so high on Turner but I can see why that maybe could have strike in and Renato like I said is not durable pretty similar to Cody you see the guys um, that are um that are not durable and they're known to get days in the fight and hurt it's just you can't really um trust them you understand you can't really say oh man this guy is gonna be he's gonna be an even fight because you know, just take one shot <laughs> you know what i mean so i still put this for even man because there's a grappling chance because i see renato will eat some shots still and get days and fall down and get up but cody doesn't do that cody just goes out so um yeah um john and turner yeah this fight Maybe even 160 for John and Turner, but the odds in there is a little too high. I still be careful because Renat has path to victory, so be careful. Um, let's see the five the odds. Odds um, Diego Lopez and Sadif Yusuf. Okay, uh, 142. Um, this is the next one here. At 142, some is kind of close. You know, it's getting kind of close. It could even be even after, you know, when the fight starts, maybe. Um, or a little bit before. Um, yeah, I like Lopez, you know, but I still be careful. Like I said, Yusuf is still a power hitter. You know, he's a first round, still there. All right, home. Damn, Kyla Carson, the high on her, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, like, like, like I said, man, it's just takedowns, the elusiveness, the aggressiveness, the athleticism. And... Carla Harrison is she's she's prime. She's strong. She's durable. She she has a good takedowns, man. She's powerful, and she has a good martial art background. She has the skills. Striking may not be on the level of home, but home striking ain't the same anymore. But I still wouldn't be so high on Harrison. I still be careful. Like I said with women fights, man. There's all we see upsets. I don't even have to explain that to you. I don't even have to explain that, man. Because home could come in here and just touch her up, touch her up, touch her up. Maybe get taken down one or two times, which I doubt that. I see Harrison taking her down a lot of times, in my opinion. But you never know. But, you know, this happens, you know, especially in pay-per-view cards. You know, home circle around, use her footwork, touch her, touch her, touch her, touch her, touch her, touch her. Or even probably even knock, knock, her, knock her out with a head kick. It's possible. A little flashback to Ronda Rosie. Yeah, it is possible, guys. So, but I wouldn't be so high on Harrison. I'd be careful with this one. Mm. It could be one you probably may. I feel Harrison should win this fight, but the odds are a little too high, so I'll be careful. Slightly crazy odd. Adjamin Sterling, Kat, Kelvin Cutter. Um, um, uh, give me a second here, guys. Gonna freeze up a little bit. Oh, man. Uh, give me a second here, guys. Come on. Unfreeze. Unfreeze. Um, okay, Alvin, uh, Adjimin Sterling, Calvin Carter. Um, okay, um, Adjimin is a little, eh, little bit slightly, dab, but he's kind of closer. Cater, even though he hasn't been in there, knee injury, don't know what to expect, but Cater can strike. And we see with Sterling, man, the striking is not to that level, you know, but he's been grappling a lot, so I've been a little closer. Yeah, you know, I, st I still be careful though. Relic and Prasco. Prasco, even fight. Perfect. I don't know. I, you know, and I have nothing to say. It's even a fight. That's perfect. I like Prosco. It's an even fight. No, no problem with that. Whoa! Crazy odds. Crazy odds. <laughs> Bo Nickel is two thousand. Two thousand five hundred. 1450 wow uh, do I agree with that I don't think anybody should should be so high on odds dude I don't care if you're a super prospect it's always a chance man if these guys come in here prepared even though Cody you know usually can drop the ball but the guy still has skills it's not like he's going in there with no arms and no legs and no brain I would say he's going in there with no brain at all he just doesn't have a no chance and there's no chance in hell for him. Definitely Bo Nick is gonna win. You ever heard of experience? Experience goes a long way. And we see that a lot, man. The guys that are super experienced. They could be 50 years old. They could be Mike Tyson. It's just he can't count these guys out. 
you can't make this bow nickel. Yeah, it's prospect, and I have him winning, but at this, I dog or pass, in my opinion. That's all I'm going to say, dog or pass, man. There's no reason to even play this. It doesn't make any sense. Or parlay. Leave it out, in my opinion. <laughs> or I'm going to say fact. All right? Armin Shurukin and Charles Alvira, Shurukin 2, something 200. Um, I'll make this fight a little closer, guys. Um, don't sleep on Charles. You don't want to do that. You see, our next fight here where Charles is a veteran, super veteran, skilled guy when he lost to um, Makachev, you know, which Armin went to a decision with Makachev and Charles Oliveira lost, but I believe Makachev submitted him. You know, so you, know, you don't want to look at the fight game like that too much, but again, don't sleep on Charles. Mm, do Bronx, don't sleep on him. I think the odds in Armin's a little too high. A little, it's a kind of a disrespect. Should be a little closer, guys. I like Armin though, for my own reason, because I believe Armin can, you know, avoid takedowns and avoid submissions and avoid the heavy and avoid the striking. But it's 50-50 though. There's a possibility that the submission could get up in there. The guillotine or one of those things could get up in there, man. So be careful with that. Justin Gaethje, 148. Oh, they're high. Well, they're not high, but they have him as favorite. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I guess based off his last night. I'm liking Max, though. It's not bad odds, but it should be even. You know, I like Max. I feel Max should have been the favorite, but I, I would say more even. Willie Zhang and Yan, they got Zhang 500. I can see why. I feel that Zhang is pretty, more well, it's, it's pretty much more well-rounded here. As long as she doesn't get hurt in the foot and, and knocked out. But Willie Zhang can finish Yan on the foot, I believe, a heavy, more heavier striker, and she can submit her, take her down, out wrestle her, in my opinion. Yeah, so I don't disagree with this one, but still be careful, like I said, with the, with the women fight, especially championship fights. <laughs> Always pay per view card, guys. Pay per view cards. Pay per view cards. Always what? Upsets. Cody Brundage won. Wow. Mm. Charles Oliveira won by a guillotine choke. Mm. Exactly. 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 Max Holloway wins. Mm. All right. We got Hill and Alex Pereira. You can say even fight here. Close to even. We got Alex Pereira's slight little favorite. Baby, baby favorite. Tiny. I like Hill. So, yeah, it's not so bad, but it do got some crazy odds on this card, though, guys. Crazy odds on this card here. It's odds, especially Bo Nickel and Cody Brown did just as <laughs> bananas, dude. That's that's just that's like saying that Cody doesn't have a chance, like zero. You know, I mean, it's mad as well. Don't even go 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 in there and fight because Bo Nickel already won already, <laughs> ain't it? Be careful with that, man. One level to everybody, guys. Remember to subscribe to this channel, hit the thumbs up button, check out the Patreon account. Um, also, uh, donate, man. You know, a little 25 cents here, 10 cents. <laughs> you guys donate what you can. It's all over the end of the day. All right, just hit the thumbs up button and subscribe, guys. All right, one love. Oops.